Were the body's eyes aroused by beauty of the natural world, the soul's eyes aroused by the beauty of real being. The ontological or spiritual order of the world of which nature is only its reflection. Thus beauty is not only to be found in the domain of art, natural world, but in the life of virtue, and higher still, the noetic intuition or intellect which seeks even higher still toward the one, which lies even beyond the real being itself. The first step in the ontological journey toward the One is in the encounter with beauty, which is available to us anywhere if we truly observe the natural world around us. Just as beauty shapes the material world into beautiful things, so beauty shapes the soul into beautiful virtues, if we allow it to do so. And then we may ascend higher. But the ascent upward is, in some sense, of movement inward. He that has the strength, let him arise and withdraw unto himself, forgoing all that is known by the eyes, turning away forever from the material beauty that once made his joy. When he perceives those shapes of grace that show him body, let him not pursue. He must know them for copies, vestiges, shadows, and hasten away towards that they tell of. Out of necessity, Botinus resorts to mythopoetic language to express what human language is inherently incapable of describing. The Narcissus myth, Homer's Odyssey, Plato's allegory of the cave, and the mystery religions of Botinus's day. These images should not be taken literally, but as poetic interjections urging us toward what cannot be expressed, only experienced. The initial recognition of real being is like first exiting the cave of Plato's allegory. The soul's eye is initially weak, and so it must adapt itself to the radiant light shining down from the One. Now the work of Philosophia may begin in earnest, cultivating oneself, allowing one's own beauty and goodness to shine forth. In one of Plotinus's most memorable passages, he compares the philosophical life to that of sculpture. Withdraw unto yourself and look, and if you do not find yourself beautiful yet, act as does the creator of a statue that is to be made beautiful. Cuts away here, he smooths there, he makes this line lighter, the other purer, until a lovely face has shone upon his work. So do you also, cut away all that is excessive. Straighten all that is crooked. Bring light to all that is overcast. Labor to make one glow of beauty. And never cease chiseling your statue. Until there shine out on you from it the godlike splendor of virtue. Until you shall see the perfect goodness surely established in this stainless shrine. 